Okay, today we are going to talk about Social Security. In previous lessons, we've talked about the importance of having income in retirement if you ever want to stop working. This lesson deals with Social Security as one source of that income, and in future lessons we will talk about other sources of retirement income that you will surely need. A couple notes. One, Social Security will not be enough for you, and it never will. Social Security alone will not fulfill your goals, and it is not going to be increased to any level that will fulfill your goals. It will not be enough. You need other sources of retirement income. And secondly, personal opinion, you should plan as if you won't get anything. Now, I don't believe that will ever happen. I don't believe the United States government is going to go to some sort of no government retirement. However, I always consider it an intelligent move to plan as if the government will give you nothing and then you are self-sufficient. And then if the government does give you something, that can be your extra. That can be what you use to increase the quality of your life past what you have made for yourself. It is when possible, it is always better to be self-sufficient because then you know, then you know you're taken care of by yourself and you're not relying on another entity to take care of you. That one is, of course, personal opinion. The vocab that we're going to be going over and needing today, Social Security. It is a uh, basically government payments to retired workers. I use that defini definition specifically. The government is paying retired people who have worked, who have officially worked during their uh, working career. Uh, Pay-as-you-go program. It is a program that is funded month-to-month -month by month-to-month -month taxes. It is funded as it's going. It is not a future program. It is a month-to-month -month program. FICA is the Federal Insurance Contribution Act. It's the law that says the government can tax your paycheck to pay for the two insurances, Social Security and Medicare, uh, health care insurance for retired people. And finally, uh, Social Security Trust Fund is a large, sump, a large lump of Social Security money that is currently invested and it makes money every single year and Social Security uses that money for payments and as an emergency fund. Okay, so let's talk about the standard way to look at income during retirement, okay? Um, first off, the average age range of retirement is uh, when someone is 62 years old through 70 years old. That's the average. Uh, people can retire early in their 50s with careful planning Okay, so you can stop working in your 50s with careful and serious planning. And you can retire in your 40s with absolute dedication. It has to be a, a single focus goal. There are people who retire in their late 30s, mid 30s, and 40s. Uh, FIRE, F-I-R-E, financially independent, retire early. But to be able to retire in your 30s or your 40s, it has to be your goal. You have to start at age like 20. You have to have a good income and you have to dedicate your whole existence in your 20s to retiring in your 30s or 40s. The average person retires in age 62 through 70. Now, the income in retirement is what they describe as a three-legged stool. This is how it used to be, okay, 20, 30, 40 years ago. Um, the stool's legs are social security payments from the government per month, someone's personal investments, personal savings per month, and the payments per month from their pensions given by their jobs. And they always should have given a, a fourth leg. Uh, it should have been side jobs, okay? But um, uh, I, I guess people didn't want to think of it that way, but there is always ways to make some little bit of spending money by, by little side hustles that are actually enjoyable. So there should be a fourth leg for just like spending money, but these are the three main ones. Now, any two are enough for a comfortable retirement. If you have a job that pays you a pension, your pension and your social security is enough for a comfortable retirement. So this takes care of a lot of workers in the United States. Basically, any government employee is gonna have a decent pension plus social security. So think of it, any basically government employee is taken care of and they literally don't have to have personal savings because their pension and social security 
are going to be enough. And it's going to be tough for them to do personal savings because g generally government jobs are paid a little bit less, blah, 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 blah. There's a lot less private pensions out nowadays. So if you work for GE, if you work for a big company, guess what? No pensions. Okay. None. So going into the workforce nowadays, unless you're working for the government, you ain't getting a pension. So what does that leave? Social security and private savings. We'll talk about that in a second. Three. If you have three, you are going to retire rich. If you have a pension, social security and personal savings, you are going to retire rich. One is not enough. There is no world, no universe where any one of these can sustain your retirement. You cannot live on a pension alone. You, you can live on a pension alone. It will be slightly above poverty threshold. You will be at the poverty threshold with only Social Security. And if you only have personal savings, the average personal savings isn't enough. You would have to have a lot of personal savings and Yes, that can be done, but that's a special case of high income people that really invest a lot. So just put it in your brain and think you're going to want at least two of these. And for today's lesson, it's uh, important to focus in on the fact that Social Security alone is equal to the poverty threshold income. It will not go up. You will not be getting more than the people nowadays adjusted for inflation, and it can very well go down later in life, so you will be getting less adjusted for inflation than people today. So the program is not going to get better. It is only going to get quote unquote worse. Don't take my word for it. Take the words of the government. Now, I know that's not something you often hear, trust and take the words of the government. But when the government is telling you that they aren't going to help you, believe them. That's when you, ta that's when you take the words of the government. When the government flat out comes out and says, this isn't enough. We're not going to be able to help you. Believe them. Quote, but Social Security was never meant to be the only source of income for people when they retire. Social Security replaces about 40% of an average wage earner's income after retiring. And most financial advisors say retirees will need 70% or more of their pre-retirement earnings to live comfortably. To have a comfortable retirement, Americans need more than Social Security. They also need private savings and investments. Savings and investments are the same thing, basically. This comes directly from the Social Security Administration. Let me translate this for you, because they use the nice words to live comfortably, et cetera, et cetera. Let me translate it. Social Security is meant so retirees don't die. Social Security is meant so retirees can afford shelter and food only. That's what it's meant for. It's meant so they don't die. It is meant for survival wages, survival money, not comfort money, directly from the Social Security Administration. That's your biggest lesson from today. Social Security is meant for survival only. If you want more, you have to find more money while you're working or after you retire. Now, I don't know the actual, um, what they wanted when they started Social Security. You can probably look that up to find out if they wanted it to be a comfortable retirement. Like they wanted minimum wage. They wanted minimum wage to be a living wage, but it didn't end up that way. Now, whatever they wanted Social Security to be, I don't know. You could try to find that out. But the reality today, and it's the reality they admit, it is the very basics, not to die in retirement. Don't know what they wanted it to be. So here's how it works basically. So what you do is you calculate your average earnings for over 35 years. So they expect you to work 35 years, okay? Calculate adjusted for inflation, what your average yearly earnings were. And this is for official jobs. If you get a paycheck, that's an official job. If you are self, what, when you report income to the IRS, that's earnings from a job whether it's self-employed or whether you're uh, uh, working for someone, okay? If you make money and never file taxes and never claim that money, you're not getting Social Security. It is for people who officially worked and reported their incomes. So calculate your average yearly, and the average yearly would come out to be maybe you earn 40000 a year, averaged out over 35 years, adjusted for inflation. Well, you put that into a graph. You put it into a chart and it will find your yearly, they use monthly, but I use yearly, yearly benefits. 
Now, you can adjust those yearly benefits by choosing when to retire. If you retire at 67 years old, you get whatever the graph says for your yearly benefits until you die. If you retire earlier at 62, you get less per year until you die. If you wait to take it at 70, you get more per year until you die. Now, there is no gaming the system. The insurance people and the it's called an actuary has looked this over. The only difference is if you live to an average life expectancy, you get your money earlier at 62 rather than waiting till 67 or 70. The only thing you should think about is whether you expect to live long or die young. That's the, that's, that's the only way to game this system. If you expect to die young, take it early. If you expect to live a long time, hold off till 70. You can't go wrong, basically. And so how much is it? Basically, it's going to be between 15 and 30,000 per year. You can't break that. You can't go over 30, like uh, uh, a certain number. Basically, it's going to be 15 to 30,000. OK, so as you uh, we'll get to that later. The current average, the average person receiving Social Security, they're only getting 18 and a half and 18.5 thousand, 18,500 per year. OK, so I, I know, of course, everyone's going to be above average, but we look at the averages, right? So probably figure, could you live on $18,000 per year? No, no, you can't. Okay, that's why we say the average person is getting survival wages just barely at the poverty threshold. Even if you have two people in a family, two people who are retired, that's $37,000 a year, which is still not enough for a comfortable retirement. It's still basically, basically at the survival level. The answer is no, you can't live comfortably. So you're going to have to have your own personal savings or a pension. OK, let's go into how it's paid for. It is a month to month program. It's a month to month program. You do not put your money in as you work and then take your money out. This is what people this is what people uh, mess up on Social Security. They think I have contributed to Social Security all my working career. So now I get that money back. No, 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 no. The money's gone every single month. They take money out of the paychecks to pay the retirees. And it is a um, retirement income for retired workers. So they tax from current workers. Current workers pay retired workers. And that's called the FICA tax. On every paycheck and every time a self-employed business person does their taxes, they take a percent of the earnings and pay it to the retired workers. Okay. Current workers are taxed each paycheck and that money every month goes to retirees. Now, this is a massive program. This is an unbelievably huge shift of money. It is a huge tax. And it's taken out every paycheck, so people don't even really understand how much it is because it's taken out in little chunks. Here's how much it is. A worker will pay 6.2% of their earnings every paycheck. 6.2% is a lot. And this is not like taxes you ever get back when you file your taxes. The, this 6.2 is immediately goes to the retirees. You will only get this, this returned if you work long enough, then retire, then live not long enough to get your, your own social security. 6.2%, but that's not all. The employer will also pay 6.2% of every worker's paycheck. So every paycheck, Basically, 12.4% of every 12.4% of everyone's salary is going to Social Security. If you're self-employed, if you're self-employed, 12.4% of all your profits you have to pay to Social Security. And this program is so massive. 12.4% of all wages in this country per month is still currently not enough to support the retirees. It is. I think it is the largest government program we have. It is worth noting that this 12.4% and 6.2% is only on the first 120,000 that someone earns per year. So if you have a very strong job of $150,000, $200,000, you only pay and your employer only pays the 6.2% the on your first 120,000 and then they stop taxing. The reason they do that is because there's actually a cap of how much Social Security you get in, in the end. So uh, we'll get into that. OK, so like I said, the actual taxes from earnings is not enough to pay for the current amount of retirees. And so the Social Security 
uh, administration has another source of income. It's called the Social Security Trust Fund. Now, I want to talk about how trust funds works. Trust funds are basically the same as endowments, which is basically the same as your retirement savings. They all work in the same way. So uh, a, a, a person's retirement savings is personal. Endowments are usually used for colleges or uh, opera houses or uh, uh, nonprofits like that. Trust funds, Social Security uses it, and a couple other entities use trust funds. They all work in the same way. There, that is this. There's a huge amount of money, a pile of money that's invested. And as you know, when you invest money, you will always get 2% to 7% uh, additional per year. So if you take $100 and invest it, next year you will have $102 or you will have $107. So what you, then what you can do is you can do three things with that interest that you make on your big chunk of money every year. Number one, you could just keep it in and let it grow. And this is what you're doing with your retirement savings while you're working. All the money, all the interest, all, all the growth just keeps compounding and growing upon itself. You could, every single year, use the interest. Okay, so if you invest $100, and at the end of the year, it makes a, it's 103. You can take that three dollars off and spend it. And if you do that, your big chunk of money will stay the same because you're only spending the interest. Or you can use the interest, and you can use some of the fund. So that's what you do. Uh, number one, you let it grow your retirement savings as you're working, and then in retirement, or for a while, you live on the interest. And then as you get older, you start shrinking the actual money because you want to spend it all. Okay, so typically that's what you do. Colleges and endowments, they only do number two. They just use their interest, what they need, and their endowment stays the size forever. And that should be how Social Security uses. Social Security has a $3 trillion pile of money, and they should just be taking off the interest every year to uh, uh, pay for benefits. Okay, it's a money maker. It's always a little dangerous when you dip into and make your pile shrink year to year, unless it's your retirement savings and you are planning on dying in 10 years. So of course you're gonna scoop out and live life. So here's what it looks like in a, an equation sort of setting. Um, the current system month to month is stable, which means the income is equal to the payments, okay? So every month, uh, Social Security, FICA, gets 12.4% of all wages and earnings in the country, okay? Remember, 6.2% from you, 6.2% from your employer, and 12.4% from all um, uh, self-employed businesses. Oh, by the way, uh, Medicare is not retirement income, it's retirement health insurance, and that's another 1.45% you pay and your employer pays. Um, for the retired health and uh, uh, retired payments, Social Security, FICA, the American worker is taxed astronomically. It's the largest programs in the government. Okay, yes, I said that. So, and that's not enough, 12.4% of all wages. So you got this Social Security trust fund of 3 million, 3 trillion, 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 3 trillion. Every month it gains a little bit of interest. And so they take that interest, add it to the FICA, and that is equal to the monthly payments. 85% of the monthly payments go to retirees and 15% of the payments go to disabled Americans because Social Security also, it's not just for retired workers, but if someone is disabled and can't work during uh, when they're younger, they can apply for Social Security benefits. Now, this is fine for right now, but in the future, we know this is gonna happen because we know how many people are retiring in the next 10, 20, 30 years. The income is going to be less than the payments needed because the, work, the, the workers are retiring faster than new workers. So we have a bunch of workers supporting a little bit of people retired on the top, but people are living longer, sort of, and there's more retiring. So pretty much there's gonna be more people at the top. A pyramid is easy to sustain. It's got a large base supporting the, the top, but as more retirees grow, the base can't, there's not enough money. Ask Japan, Japan has gone through this in the last 15 years. Now, income is gonna be less than payments. So what they're going to do is they're going to be scooping out money from this three trillion to be able to pay. 
And so the trust fund is going to go down, down, down to zero. And once the trust fund goes to zero, the system will break because there won't be enough money per month to pay the uh, retirees. Okay, so you see, as we go forward, they are going to use more and more and more of this trust fund until it's down to zero, and then we have a problem. Let's hope they fix it before it breaks. So to recap, it is an unsustainable system as it is because payments are growing because more people are retiring and living longer. The income side is not changing enough. The trust fund is shrinking because they're using the principle of the trust fund to make up the shortfall. Now, your only solutions is to either increase the money coming in or decrease the money coming out. Those are your solutions. So let's examine the different moving parts that people could, that um, the government could do. First, let's look at raising the income. Okay. How are we going to get more money coming into the system? Well, number one, we could simply raise the FICA tax rate. Okay. Instead of taxing people 6.2 from their paycheck, you could raise it to 6.4 or 6.8. Now that is going to be unpopular with everybody paying taxes and it's going to be very popular unpopular paying taxes and very popular with current retirees and people close to being retired see if there was a solution where everyone is happy then we would do it but every one of these solutions has some people angry and some people loving it okay the older retired people love raising the taxes the younger people do not the workers do not okay we could raise the cap remember you're only taxed up to your first uh hundred and 120,000. Sorry, I made a mistake there. So we could raise that cap so you could be taxed. If you make 200,000, you would be Social Security FICA taxed on all the 200,000 per year. Okay. This would make only people earning over $120,000 a year unhappy and everybody else happy. By the way, if you were just looking at the number of people that like a solution versus the number of people who don't like a solution, this is the one raise the cap. And this would be a quote unquote tax the rich. Uh, but I'm not saying I'm for tax the rich, but I am mentioning that this would make more people happy and only a little amount if you're just thinking about amounts of people who agree and disagree. Uh, you could grow the workers population. If there's more young people, if there's more workers, then there's more people getting paychecks to tax. Well, obviously that is get employment down, unemployment down, so run on full employment, but that's still not enough. So maybe more births, raise the birth rate. But how do you do that as a government? You really can't. And let me tell you, birth rate is, is steady. It's not going to raise. Okay. The birth rate is not going to raise. Then increase immigration, increase the amount of Immigration grows the population, growing the population, and it grows the population at a younger worker level because the older immigrants aren't going to get Social Security. It's the younger ones that would. Uh, uh, and we don't. Sorry. And that's just that's it. Yeah, I was going to say we don't have to wait to see the benefits because it's a month to month. So if you get a growth in workers this month, you get immediately the growth in Social Security payments, taxes. Um, you could also use taxes from other sources. You could use uh, income taxes from the different income taxes. You could use fees. You could just start taxing in other areas. Uh, a lot of people don't like this because they like it right now where the actual FICA money goes directly to the retirees. It's, it's no borrowing like the, gov the federal government does. It, there, it, it's, it's right there. Tax for what you want. So people tend to like that. Okay, let's talk about the other side. If you're, you could increase income, but now how about reducing payments? This is, by the way, almost universally not really liked by people because it, it, it's not a good feeling to have to reduce payments. Um, the first way is by a means test. Only give Social Security to the people who quote unquote need it. So basically, if you retire with a lot of money, you wouldn't get Social Security. Right now, it's sort of means tests. If you retire with a lot of money, your Social Security payments are taxed. But uh, this would go farther and say, if you've got a certain amount of money and certain income in retirement, you don't get Social Security at all. And people are, some people like that, some people don't. You could cut benefits for future retirees. Now, this seems more fair than cutting benefits for current retirees 
because you could tell everyone when they start working, your benefits are going to be less. So plan accordingly. So you're actually telling people at the beginning of their career, your social security leg is going to be really small. So you better get this personal savings leg uh, up there. You could uh, cut benefits for current retirees. This is universally people don't like it. Okay, it's, an, it's a non-starter. You don't tell someone they're going to have something and they plan their life around it and then you take it away. That you can't just take money from the current people. A lot of people are living on poverty threshold wages and you can't just make that go down. And in fact, Social Security is guaranteed to increase with inflation. You can't make it go down. You can only make it go up according to inflation. You could raise the age of retirement. A lot of people are talking about this. Instead of saying full benefits are at age 67, say, oh no, everyone in the future has to work another year to 68 or another year to 69. I predict this is going to happen. Uh, we'll get to that. You could adjust the early penalty and late benefits. That's pretty technical. Uh, you could also adjust the any of the amounts or qualifications for uh, disabled Americans. That's 15% of the payments. You could adjust this. I don't know enough about this section of it to intelligently talk about what that would be and what that would look at like. I just know it could happen because it is on the payment side. So even though I said prepare yourself and don't count on Social Security, I mean, that's a good goal. I pretty much guarantee Social Security will be around in some form in the future. I, it's just too big of a government program. It's too entrenched in society. Those kind of programs don't go away. They just get tweaked, okay? It's not being replaced anytime soon. It would be a fundamental change in our economy. And fundamental changes don't happen like that overnight. And they don't even happen within decades. So what do I think is going to happen? I think they'll do a little bit of everything. They'll raise the FICA rate. They're going to raise this cap. So more of the quote unquote higher earners pay more. Okay. Um, so those are the two they're going to do on that side. They are going to raise the retirement age one or two years, guaranteed, in my own opinion, guaranteed. Uh, they're not going to cut benefits. They are going to tweak some of these other things. They're not going to they're not going to cut benefits too much for future retirees. They're going to do it. They're going to do it by adjusting the ages. OK, it's more uh, it's more palatable. It's more politically acceptable. And uh, they're going to put in a little bit of a means test, but they'll do it just by taxing more Social Security. They're not going to they're not going to get rid of Social Security for higher earners altogether. They're just going to tax it more somewhere. So that's what I think they're going to do. And I think Social Security is going to be going forward. It is uh, it is one of the biggest social safety nets in entitlement programs of this country. It literally keeps people from starving. So that's what I think they're going to do. Stick around for one or two bonus thoughts that um, I forgot to mention earlier, but that's basically your uh, Social Security overview. Here's your bonus thoughts. Here's your Social Security graph curve. Uh, this is the official one from the Social Security Administration. This is just someone else's. So if you're looking at numbers, it's this one. It's basically your average yearly or monthly earnings over your working career, and then it tells you your monthly payment. I converted it to uh, yearly. So if you make 10000 a year, you're going to get roughly 10000 in payments. So uh, it's really stilted. It's really, it's really uh, given for the first er dollars earned, and then it trails off to a maximum. So the maximum, no matter how much you earn right now per year, the maximum you're going to get is thirty-two thousand. Okay, and that's like for people who earn one hundred and twenty, hundred twenty thousand dollars a year, they're only going to get thirty-two. Um, so you see that curve. You can figure figure that out, but it's a decreasing curve. If you earn ten point six per year. You're going to get 9.6. So you're going to earn, you know, if you're a very low worker, low earner, you're going to get almost your whole salary, 90% of it. If you get 36,000 a year, okay, you're going to get about 20,000. If you earn 63,000, you're going to get 26. You know, so the lowest earners earn 90% of their income. The middle, middle, um, uh, the middle class people earn like seven, uh, 40 per, 40 percent of their income. And the, the, the high earners earn even less of their income. So you see, it's only, it's only $10,000 through $32,000. It's only for survival payments. Okay, that's the curve. Okay, here is actually um, the tax taken out of a paycheck, right? So this is a part of a paycheck. And you can see that FICA is take $48.35. And if you did the math, 48.35 would be exactly 6.2% of the, the gross monthly payment. Now, what they did in this one, FICA means Social Security, even though FICA is really Medicare and Social Security, so they broke it up. 
FICA is Social Security. Then they take out for Medicare, old people or retired people uh, health care. Uh, federal taxes, state taxes, okay. Uh, dental insurance, flex, uh, MVP. This would be um, uh, union. This would be a union, a local union, other union. I mean, all of all of these should have something taken out. They just took it out at the earlier part of the year. You can see they took it out at the early part of the year, but sometimes these are taken out. So the most important thing is FICA is Social Security right there. All right, and those were those were the bonus things that I forgot to put in the main lesson. All right, thanks for watching.